as you can imagine, I was on fire last night when they did that robot video. <laughs> so this, is, this is Randy Kirk. And if you like this kind of content, then you should like it or like it. Wait till later to like it if you want to be sure you like what I say today. Um, and then uh, join my Patreon and we'll, we're going to have a big, big announcement tomorrow. All right, let's get into the into the real, real deal here. The bot video was not CGI. OK, uh, there's a video that you might want to take a look at that's put out by uh, by Scott Walter Walter and by uh, Dr. Know-it-all, uh, John Gibbs. Uh, they put the video out earlier today. I'll link it in the um, in the information below. Uh, they uh, are more expert at this than I am. I couldn't tell CGI uh, probably because I'm too old to, uh, you know, have been in the transition and but my boys, they can they can nail it every time. Anyway, um, check it out. Uh, it is not CGI. Uh, so what we saw was absolutely a, right up to or even exceeding my expectations in terms of everything that I've been saying and that nobody else has been saying. Now, John and uh, Scott uh, and connecting the dots have all weighed in last week. You may have watched the video. I'll link that video as well. They all weighed in last week and said, yes, we agree to your basic understanding, your basic principles, Randy. Let me reiterate them. Number one, that Tesla right now is building multiple bots in the factory Number and, and, and deploying them in the factory. Now, we're not sure about deploying them. Maybe they're only deployed in the lab at this point, but we know that they are building multiple bots that is clear as a result of the video and Elon's explanation last night. Number two, that they are capable of doing work right now, useful work right now. Uh, number three is that there is no reason why they can't build lots of these. And they clearly can build lots of these. And Elon snickered <laughs> and gave a little look and said, and said that there are many of these uh, in the plant. He didn't give a number, uh, but he did say that there are many of them, and it was kind of a, a wink and a nod. Uh, I, we don't know what that number might be, and we don't know where they're being used. So those are two things. Those are big questions that I still have, but there's certainly uh, uh, multiple units in use. And then number th the final thing was I've been saying all along that they would build lots and lots and lots of these, and that they would get into production actually have a pilot line by the end of this year or going into next year. What we saw demonstrated last night, there is no reason not to. Absolutely no reason not to. Those units, it won't take long for them to become even more dexterous. Well, let, let's talk about that. What, what do they need to do to get to the pilot line from here? What we saw was that they were very dexterous. They were able to do very minute operations with their fingers. They were able to touch, uh, pick up a soft cloth. They were able to pick up a, a, a squirrely cable. Uh, they were able to pick up a hard arm uh, and move it. Uh, and they were able to make decisions. Uh, when I say decisions, they were able, they were clearly, uh, you could see him making a decision as to how to place his hands around the arm, the robot arm, before he picked it up. These were all indications that they're the hand capabilities were very dexterous, very capable, and that the, the machine had some ability to learn and adapt with regard to the methods used to do the jobs that were being done. So this was clear. Now, those could be smoother, they could be faster, they could become more and more intelligent, but that should happen extremely rapidly if there are multiples of these in the factory or even in lab situations doing work on a regular basis, they should be learning really fast based on what we saw. Um, so then we saw that the uh, bot was able to, uh, you know, use a, 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 a drill type device with a finger grip and to pull appropriately back on that finger grip in order to uh, uh, accelerate the, uh, the bit or the, or the turning device at the right rate, not to over tighten the bolt or, or the activity that they were trying to do right there. <laughs> That's really dexterous. That is extremely useful capability uh, that sometimes 
I tell you what, I'm not always all that good at that. Are you? Sometimes I over, I, I push too too fast or not fast enough. Uh, the bot was able to do that quite nicely. Um, the bots were working together. They were up, uh, doing one task that required both of them to do the task, uh, and they were they were doing that in a way that was constructive and useful uh, in the in the task. This, according to uh, Dr. Scott Walter, uh, actually, I, I'm not sure he uses Walt, a doctor, even though he's a PhD. Uh, Scott Walter said that this was a uh, definitely an, a, a, a big deal that they were coordinating their effort, if you will. So all of those things that are happening, just the little bit that we saw would indicate that they are at extremely useful level as of now, and that the usefulness would be able to be increased very rapidly by the by the neural link activities that they're going to plug in. Uh, and Elon talked about them learning in multiple ways, learning by seeing the individual do the job and then copying, or by being told what to do. Uh, he didn't mention simulators, but simulators would be obvious. So they have all these different ways to learn there are multiples of them. So there are multiples of them every single day that are learning these abilities. They already know how to walk, to swivel, to move, to lift and carry and put down all of these activities. It's only going to get better every single day. And that would be just the existing bots that are being made right now. And again, this is my opinion. I don't have any proof of this part is that they would be iterating, they would be building 10 more bots next week, that those bots would have better actuators or fewer cables or uh, more uh, capability uh, than the ones that we saw on stage. And then that those would already get the learning from the previous generation and would just get that much better. And this would just happen week after week after week. So um, my, I continue to believe that there's no reason not to manufacture as many of these and deploy them in the factory as fast as they possibly can, and then to start getting the social learning that they need. So we need these robots to be able to socially integrate, if you will, with the workers in the plant. And I don't mean that in the sense that they're going to be socially responsible and, and clever and, uh, and, and tell good jokes. What I mean is that the the human workers are going to need to adapt and and to be able to uh, work with these uh, uh, bots out in the factory uh, environment, and they'll need to have some understanding and knowledge about that before they start selling it to um, manufacturers and and uh, other other kinds of industrial users. Uh, certainly, before they start uh, selling it to to home users. So. Um, uh, I'm, uh, I continue with my projection, my prediction that they will begin to manufacture these in, at scale uh, in late 2023 or early 2024. I can't see any reason why not. I'm looking for your comments. I'm looking for anybody's comments. I'm looking for somebody to bring me on, on their channel and challenge me uh, with regard to this uh, or would like to talk about it or somebody that's in the robot business. There was nothing. Zip zero. According to Scott, according to John, according to connecting the dots, before we saw the video, they knew of no reason that would stop, no limiting factor that would keep Tesla from being able to get into full manufacturing later this year. And Scott and uh, and John were their minds were blown by what they saw uh, on that video yesterday, as was mine. And so. That just accelerates our, uh, gives us even ever more reason to believe that these will be in production um, very, very soon. And in fact, uh, Elon even said as much. Uh, Elon uh, didn't remark a ton about the robots, uh, except everything that he said would indicate that they are moving as fast as they possibly can on this, and that this is a massive, massive business, un unlimited potential. And that this is probably the number two thing on his mind at Tesla. Uh, my guess is that uh, other than RoboTaxi, um, he, he's not needed that much anymore. Everything else is, is going.
And I'm sure he's a heck of a useful guy to have it on any, any meeting that they have where they're doing masterminding and, and trying to think about how to uh, improve products, products and procedures and processes. Uh, I'm sure he's, he's great to have in a meeting and I'm sure they want him on, on as many of these meetings as possible. But I think his staff, you saw him, these guys are phenomenal. Um, so he's not needed in most of these activities anymore, but finishing the job on the uh, uh, robo taxi is, I'm sure, huge, way top of Elon's mind. And then I think he's got a massive passion uh, for the uh, Optimus robot. So give me your comments, join Patreon. Uh, and uh, it's as usual, it has been really great talking to you.